Toy Insanity on the Toy Insanity channel. The channel's the nice thing in twice. Thumbs it up once, will you? Ah, uh, yeah, that's me. Toy Insanity, uh, this is my NECA Gremlins 11. Would you believe the movie? Gremlins 1 came out 39 years ago today, June 8th, 1984. Oh, we're obviously going to unbox the Brain Gremlin. One of my favorites. Oh, lots to talk about. First thing is I realized when I did the channel trailer for June, I realized Ghostbusters 1 and Gremlins 1 came out the same day, June 8th, 1984. June 8th has since become National Ghostbusters Day. And there is a National Gremlins Day, April 28th. Last year we looked at some Funko figures on Gremlins Day. I can't link it any in any way to the movie, April 28th. But I figure they didn't want to, you know, considering the legacy of each of these movies, they did not want to share the day with, you know, Ghostbusters Day. I looked up the tomato meters on each of these films. Gremlins 1 and Ghostbusters 1 are both certified fresh. Ghostbusters, get, get, get Ghostbusters holds a 95%. And Gremlins holds 86%. The sequels, though. Gremlins fares a little better. If you consider this tomato meter any sort of important metric... Gremlins 2 is 71. Ghostbusters 2 is only 55. Are you kidding me? I love these movies. Gremlins 2 and Ghostbusters 2 is how I fell in love with New York. And you remember when we unboxed the Demolition Gremlins, they have that little paper, which I think they should have just made it a trading card, at least made it thicker than a tiny sheet of paper. It was a little schematic of showing their... The Gremlins' intention to destroy the Statue of Liberty, it's canon. I rewatched the movie seven months ago. There's a, there's a flash scene where you can see that in the background. Very cool. So then I was, look, I was obviously looking, since it's set in New York City, in the fictional Clamp Building, which is actually the real-life skyscraper... I think it's called 101 Park Avenue. Built in 1989. Still there. Very famous office and retail complex. I think there's even residences there. But I was looking for Lady Liberty in an establishing side. There's no, there's no reference to that actually as being part of the plot. Maybe it could have been a plot of Gremlins 3. But, uh, you know, there's that little drawing. That little schematic in the background of the demolition gremlin scene. Now we're here to talk about the the brain gremlin. He takes the brain juice and becomes instantaneously intelligent. Alt hands, we get the syringe and we get his pipe. And he goes on TV with uh, you know What's his name? Grandpa. The Grandpa. You know what I'm talking about. And he's ba he's basically the advocate for Gremlin's rights. And what does he want? He wants civilization for his kind. He wants fairness and equality, I suppose. But then, of course, it's juxtaposed with him unaliving the Gremlin next to him. Suggesting... Are they even capable of the things he's requesting, such as diplomacy, compassion, standards, manners, tradition, Geneva Convention, chamber music, Susan Sontong, the essentials, dinettes, complete bedroom sets, and uh, good credit. That's <laughs> civilization. That's my best paraphrase all right cloth clothing and cool glasses and brain juice syringe pipe i've been saying for five years now 
I hope this line is a success in its re-release state. Back in the video for Gremlins, Neck Gremlins 1, I'm like, oh, I hope they're a success because they'll eventually re-release the Spider Gremlin in the background. And apparently they already released, they already re-released the Spider Gremlin at Target, and I completely missed it. The Target Holothon, which I guess was like March of this year. Uh, they sold them for 50 and they sold out, and now you can't even touch one on eBay. Unless you got a hundred dollar bill to spend on the spider gremlin. And then according to the interwebs, the bat gremlin is getting re-released later this year. And the race is still on for the first vegetable gremlin. NECA versus Funko. <sighs> so I probably missed my chance to own a spider gremlin. But hopefully we can finally get that vegetable gremlin. New York City, the city's so nice. They named it twice. See it one time, won't you? It's his favorite quote, his famous quote. Then he has the diatribe on the on the makeshift talk show. And then he has the part. He has another line when he's in the lab about oh yeah, he says something like uh, my kind, we, we have a certain, dare I say, atavism, and I'm like, atavism, what does that mean? Atavism is basically the resurgence, the reemergence of a trait that was lost in evolution. You could interpret it culturally, but usually it means something like, you know, human, uh, human hair, body hair, a tailbone. It's returned a monkey, basically. So he's basically just saying, you know, I acknowledge my kind is uncivilized, but do we not deserve compassion and diplomacy, etc.? Return to Gremlin, that's what I'm saying. Okay, very cool. NECA figure. 11 for me glamour shot glamour shot direction and development Randy Fogg, Stephen Falcon, Sculpting Kyle Windricks, Fabrication Thomas Gwynn, Paint Jeffrey Trapp, John Wardell Prototypes Truecast Studios, Photography Stephen Mazurek, Tailoring Sarah Martire, Packaging Chris Raimo love these things even in the modern age of hyperinflation. Why did nobody tell me the Spider Gremlin was out? I'm sure I couldn't have got one at retail, but it would have been nice to know. Man, I want a Spider Gremlin and a bad Gremlin and a Vegetable Gremlin. So bad. Okay. I love Gremlins. I love Gremlins too. <sighs> These Vagabond shoes in my blue glove. Oh yeah, he sings New York, New York too. Okay. Love it. Uh, goodbye.